this video we're going to learn the first invention of Bach. We're going to learn three main things. The fingerings and the arm movements so that you can succeed in playing all the, the right notes smoothly. Plus we're going to learn the trills, the ornaments, how to execute them. We're going to look into the interpretation of Bach how to make this beautiful music but still stay in the style of the Baroque. And make sure you watch to the end because in the end I will explain you how to make these three steps really work. Because without that step you will not be able to implement anything. And make sure you download in the link in the description the score which has written my fingerings on it and some other remarks. So you can follow along with this tutorial easier. If you look to the piece, we will see very quickly that the piece is in C major. It's polyphony. Polyphony means that you have more than one voice that are interacting with each other. It starts like an exact imitation and then it quickly has a different tone. But we need to hear these different voicings. But first we need to have each voice correct. So first we learn the, we, we read through the notes slowly. so far. That's the first half. So we're first going to make some exercises with the fingers. So that you make your fingers acquainted with it and make your fingers loose. Start with the one here. This is a, f a phrase, the first phrase. It's not difficult, but you have to use your arm. So one movement and then ti loose ti and this the pral trill is the ornamentation where you add the upper note and go back to the main notes. You could see it like a short trill. You have to play like... So, three notes they are. Main note, upper, second and main note again. And always prepare before any ornament. It doesn't matter if it is a mordent or a prall triller from a relaxed position. Loose and let it fall gently in the key with two, three, two. On the beat, eh? Pantrills are on the beat. So. And this one, this uh, Morden is uh, with the lower second. So it starts on the main note and then with the, it goes down, down, up, also with the relaxation. These are very short forms of trills. They're not yet trills because trills would be, uh, would be more notes. 
See how this do 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 do. It's like an imitation. You have to hear this. You must must be audible. And then right hand takes the lead again. So. And here again. And every time it starts on the same note. So the right hand starts here on C, then the left hand starts on C. Right hand here on D on on the G, and here the left hand on G. It's different than in the fugue. In the fugue it starts in uh, on different notes. here. This one we play with one, three, two. One, three, two. One, three, two. On the beat. It's, it's almost go by itself when you let your hand, when you drop your hand in the key. See? how the voices follow up each other. Then left, then right, left, right. It's like a game between the left and the right hand. Very playful piece. Important is when you have these eight notes, they are non-legato. They are not staccato, they are not legato, but non-legato. So they are broad but not connected. So with the arm. Also here in the beginning. attention to that because if you play like this that's that's wrong that's not good that's not in the style then we're getting to the second page here important is here the left hand the left hand has continuously 16 notes the whole line so you have to practice them well One, three, two, you play it on the beat. You let it just drop. See? And then the E, which is after it, I take this, it's in, in the right hand, because in the right hand it's also the same E. You only need to play it with one hand. So better play this one with the, with the right hand. Like this, really like this. Until it goes smoothly. Non legato. There's also all 16 notes in the right hand here, but they are different. In movement, they give the same feeling than the left hand in the line before. It takes over the movement, but they are not the same notes. That's how it works. And then here, four, two, three, one with one arm movement, loose. On the beat again. In the manuscript, 
Bach writes this. He writes actually through the whole piece. It's too much, but to use it as an embellishment in the end, Grant Gold does that. Why not? I like it. So, and it fits to the handwriting of Bach, because in the handwriting, Bach does that. It's not something that didn't come to Bach's mind. it a little bit you can see what which places you like it or not if you, or maybe you don't like it at all then you don't do it I like it so I do it on some places but I do it a little bit like in, in an improvising way in the time of Bach improvisation was very uh, common particularly when it came to the embellishments I don't think they executed these all the time the same way from bar 15 the atmosphere changes a little bit I would like it a little bit to start softer and then build it up towards the end. little touches of pedal. I don't play it completely dry, but I also don't play... Uh I don't play it like that. Maximum two sixteenths notes per beat. It is baroque, but it still is a feeling. So you should bring some feeling, and the feeling lies in the colors more you choose, and in the ras dynamics, which means not gradually building up, but in steps building up or building down dynamics. I would play here mezzo piano starting. and make sure that the voices play with each other, left, right, left, right, that's very important. Otherwise the music is mechanical. I'll continue here, bar uh, seven uh, somewhere. Mm. Yeah, a little bit more, see? Every time a little bit more, see? Build up, 
builds up there. It's very nice, very nice. It builds up. If you don't make something of it play all flat, then it's very boring. And it's uh, also good music for your fingers, for your technique, for your brain. I did here a little bit wrong fingering and then you are immediately out of it. So it's very important, as you see, to really program and automate the fingerings. Yeah, this is not my repertoire, but if you make it your repertoire, then you really work on that. Mm. Suddenly, subito piano. Suddenly, a little bit softer here. So we come here, builds up. Without losing tempo. Without losing the tempo, because Students often like to slow down when they start to play softer, but this is not the case. The tempo has to be home again throughout the piece as much as possible. With tiny rubatus, only in between here and there a note to st when you start a phrase or end a uh, phrase, but never more than one, one note, just like a little breath. That's a little bit uh, Bach, how it should be uh, played. You have to really automate the fingerings, which I didn't do. And you see, even when I didn't automate enough, I'm, I'm just sight reading this uh, now. If I would practice, I would really focus on automating things. How I'm going to do that, as I told you in the beginning of the video, I will show you how I work if I'm going to automate this. I will not consider how fast this piece should be played, but I take it in little parts from groups of a few notes, and I'm going to work with them. And then I go to the next small part of notes. I will show you. Raise the fingers, really articulate in the fingers, feel in the muscles every note. Here, uh, how, how to prepare this this little uh, mordance. See, until you have it nicely smooth in the fingers. And here, same in the left hand. Raise the fingers. And a really very active way of working, in a, even in a quicker tempo if necessary, in a faster tempo than it should be played. Especially here in bar 11. Here. Yeah. See, exactly, to feel every corner inside the passage. Also when you practice and feel and feel what you do 
Yes, like that. It counts for the whole piece. Also, the, the end is a little bit tweaky here. You can, you can play 1-1, one, one. why not? Five is also possible. Always this, but I don't like that thing. This, uh, that's not a nice fingering. It blocks the arm movement. When we choose fingerings, you al also have to consider that it doesn't block the arm movement. That it works together with the arm movement. Sometimes the arm movement helps complex fingerings to make them smoothen, smoothen them out. Uh, but sometimes you also choose a fingering which makes nice smooth arm movements so it sounds better. I think when you practice on this a few weeks you should have it in the fingers. But it doesn't matter if you take longer time, it's, it's take your time. The importance is that the quality. You always learn most when, the, when you finish something, really finish something, so that it is also played beautifully and with the meaning. Just to, to learn notes and go quickly to the next one without even any thought about what you are doing. You don't learn much from that. Give me the thumbs up so that other people know that this is a good video and they will also watch it. Um, if you didn't subscribe yet, hit that subscribe button plus the bell that you don't miss any notifications because I'm posting weekly videos with all kinds of tips and helping you to, um, to think about piano playing in a different way and to improve your piano playing. Eventually, when we improve our piano playing, we enjoy it more. And that's the whole goal, isn't it? So take care and see you next time.